Welcome to the Top Style Show. Thank you so much, folks, for joining us today. This cannot get better. This cannot get better. Pratika Mehta, the serial entrepreneur, the celebrity <laughs> fashion tech st- uh, sock uh, And now she's, she's coming up with Butternut AI. I'm like, whoa. And Anne, you cannot believe this. 200,000 plus websites created already with 90,000 users right after launch. How, how does she go viral? I'm like, oh my God, it's such an honor to have you. Thank you, Patika. Uh, uh, well, welcome to the show. Uh, first of all, you know, we, we got to get into, uh, I think we, we start with Butternut <laughs> and then we'll go to the, the one you're wearing, the socks, Soho. Soho, which is, you know, it's a celebrity uh, socks, uh-huh. uh, mostly for in India, mm-hmm. for men. For men. Right? Yes. Wow, that, that, that's pretty crazy. Mm-hmm. And so so uh, let's go to the Butternut AI. What is it and what's the inspiration behind it? So first of all, thank you for having me here. And next time... We are going to get you in Socks Oh, so yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So what is Butternut AI? Yeah. So it's a generative AI platform where yeah. you can build your business websites in just 20 seconds. Oh, you don't need to know coding. You don't need to do drag and drop. You yeah. just need to tell our software what you want. And it builds for you in 20 seconds. Oh, my God. <laughs> that, that, that's crazy. You know, I grew up in a, in a time when having a website was a cool thing. Hmm. And I, in my college life, I took advantage of that. I found people that had no idea with websites and I used WordPress, Wix, whatever I found on, in front of me. And back in the days, those were very crappy stuff. Uh, you know, you gotta drag, and drag and drop was like a huge Oops. thing. Yeah. And then I see Butternut AI, I go to the website, you just give a prompt, it creates an entire website <laughs> for you. Like, I'm like, whoa, hmm. that, so, so uh, you know, how, how do you get this idea, by the way? So I am an AI engineer by background. Oh. I did my master's in AI yeah. uh, from New York. So, and I've built so many websites in my own entire lifetime, but yeah. never have I ever felt delighted while building a website. It was always a task. And even in 2023, why is it such a frustrating and a daunting yeah. task to build a website? You know, and existing platforms like Wix and Webflow, they either require you to have basic coding knowledge yeah. or you hire a developer for customization. Yeah. Both time consuming and expensive. So that is, you know, when these LLMs got matured. Oh. And it's like the whole set of possibilities opened up for the entire world. Yeah. And that is what made me thinking, what are the key problems I can solve for people out there? Yeah. And then it was like, okay, my bigger vision is, can we build complex softwares with just prompts? Like, yeah. if you know what you want to build an app like Uber, can you do it as long as you know what you're building? Can you yeah. just do it without requiring, requiring developers? So, and that's the bigger vision. But it was like, okay, where do I start? And that, yeah. that's when it came, okay, website is the first thing anybody builds when they're building their business. And nobody yeah. enjoys it. I've seen my own friends spending anywhere oh between five God. to 10,000 grants yeah. just to get a simple website made. Yeah. So I got to working and uh, I've been working on it full time since February. And we built the AI models that yeah. now can build the websites in like 20 seconds with just prompts. In 20 seconds? In 20 seconds. Oh my God, so wow. Fa- I think, yes, in one minute you can launch a website, connect your domain name and just get going. You know, this is so true, everything you just said, because even if you have the know-how, even if you know the stuff, you got to go to the C panel, you got to install it, and then you got to come up with the content. content. You got to, you know, so the, the copywriters are there. You got to, you know, come up with the idea, then the image, where are you going to get the image? Sometimes there's a copyrighted, mm-hmm. you put it in. And it, it takes, even if you're a pro, it will still take you a day. Exactly. Minimum. Minimum. Right? Yes. And, and, and if you give it to a pro because you don't want to spend that day, you know, then it's five grand hmm. or at least a couple of grand. And then, so the, 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 the thing with that is, let's say you give it to them. Let's say, okay, five grand. They give you a half done product. Yes. Now you want to make a change. Another couple of grand. Hmm. So it keeps on going. going. And then you uh, the hosting need, etc. For you, you are also the host. We are, yes. Oh my God. So you just need to get a domain name and we take care of everything you require. Hosting, SSL, SEO optimizations, anything and everything. We don't want you to focus on building a website. We want you to focus on your business 
and we are going to take ah. care of launching your website, making it SEO optimized. And then, yeah, we are building more features where yeah. we'll be helping you with Facebook marketing, Instagram marketing. Oh. So we are going to take care of all your online business. Yeah. <laughs> oh my, wow. So, so the big, one of the huge thing is mm -hmm. SEO. SEO. So you guys are taking care of that. We are taking care of it. it that's currently available. That is. So whatever content is wow. generated on the website yeah. is SEO optimized for the business category you are working in and yeah. for the demographic you are targeting. Oh my God, wow, this is like, <laughs> you, you are going at full speed. This is, it's, this is so fascinating, but I, I, I'll, I'll come back to Butternut AI in, in, in a little bit, but let me get back to your background, which is way more fascinating so far for the audience and you know, so many people all around the world, whether they're watching TED Talks, whether they're watching your uh, keynote speeches, whether they are following you on social media or, or product hunt, wherever it is, you're like one of the top. And I'm like, wow, she has the magic. I, I don't know where, where she gets that energy. <laughs> this is, uh, any energy drink? Is that giving you energy? Uh, I think maybe <laughs> water. <laughs> water keeps me up. Uh, the water company got to be careful because last time you took on the socks business and the socks Soho, that's also your startup. That's my startup. Currently running, celebrities in India are wearing it. Yes. And, 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 and we are requesting you to bring it to America as well. We will, right <laughs> So, yeah, how about the socks Soho? Can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. So, the journey from being a software engineer yeah. to making sock company is quite uh, interesting. Even my parents couldn't understand how yeah. I landed up with that. And a lot of my relatives, they thought that was just my hobby. And they were like, oh, what, oh. you know, what are you exactly doing? And I used to tell them, yeah. Uh, I'm just running an IT company, don't worry about it. <laughs> that is when I started, but as it became popular, it's yeah. like, yeah, they all started, you know, wearing it, enjoying it, and asking me for more. So the start was, it was simple. Okay. Since childhood, I've been, I've been a builder. I've always yeah. enjoyed coding yeah. and art. I used to make paintings on big canvases. I used oh. to code, I used to make like, whatever I could, small, small applications. I started coding very early in life and I used to build these applications. The euphoria oh. that I, the kick yeah. you get from building things from scratch, I think I had it in me like since the very beginning and I knew I am going to start my own company one day. Yeah. And uh, so f with Sock Soho, it, was, it wasn't a very, like, uh, it wasn't something, oh, I dreamt of running a saw company. It was a very calculated decision that yeah. we took. So I was in the U.S. I was uh, working for TripAdvisor at that point of time. Oh. And I was just looking at, so after the 4G revolution in India, yeah. e-commerce, e the, 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 the GEO. Oh, Geo, my yes. God, wow. Yes, the e-commerce was growing at a very fast pace. Oh, and yeah. men fashion segment was the fastest growing segment in e-commerce because oh. earlier, you know, their mother or their wife used to shop for them. Yeah. But after e-commerce, men were shopping for themselves and they have money to spare. So consumerism was on all, at, uh, it is still on yeah. all time high in India. Yeah. That's where I thought, how can I dominate the men fashion segment? Yeah. So I'm like, okay, what can I do? How can I enter? So I made a list, list of 80 different products through which I could enter into the men fashion segment. And I weighted them, you know, with different criteria. Yeah. It should be easy to ship. People should be uh, able to buy it. There should not be a lot of competition there. And surprisingly, socks came on the top. We were weighing from sneakers to pants to everything, but yeah. socks came on the top. No sizing issue. You get what you see. There was no other competitor yeah. that was focused on socks. So we're like, okay, can we win this market? Yeah. Because I started seeing this trend in the U.S. where, you know, just like women wear jewelry, yeah. men were flaunting their socks. And oh, so yeah. it was a personal validation as well because when I used to take these nice socks for my friends um, or cousins yeah. back in India, they used to ask me for more. And it made sense, you know, my calculation and my personal experience made sense. So we launched it as an experiment. So the first three socks we launched were startup socks because we were like, okay, I can't build everything for everyone. Yeah. I need to target a segment. So who can be, uh, you know, who do I understand the most? I'm like, I understand the startup founders the most. And oh. so we built three socks. There was the crypto socks, Steve Jobs socks, and Silicon Valley socks. Oh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> and as Paul Graham says, you know, do things that do yeah. not scale initially. So uh, I went on to all these Facebook groups of startups and I started posting, hey, we built mock-ups. Hey, these are the socks we are building. You know, these are for startup founders, this and that. Would you like to buy it for your team? And we got amazing orders in the very first week. and. 
it was an experiment, but it worked very well. And then we went and made the most comfortable socks one could ever wear. Yeah. And yes, and it's uh, history since then. Now the biggest of the Bollywood celebs, yeah. they wear socks at home. I would say all the top CEOs, uh, they wear socks at home. Uh, socks oh my and, God, wow. <laughs> so it's a fun segment. And yeah. So the the sock so you you are still running it right? I am not working on it full time. No. Not full time right yes. now because you are focused on the AI side yes, of things. Yes. Yes. Wow! But but what you have done with sock Soho is is an inspiration for so many entrepreneurs, right? This is this is like wow. Mm -hmm. And 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 the especially the interesting part was from IT from from software to socks to to men's uh, the fashion. Uh, uh -huh. tech business that was that was so interesting you know a lot of people just see it as a sock business but yeah. honestly it was a tech business wow because how do you figure out where your audience is who do you target how do you get them to make oh. the repeat purchase how do you make the entire journey del delightful Delight. how do you decrease the time from somebody seeing your ad on yeah. facebook or instagram to going to check out and putting their card that is where the entire yeah. tech is yeah and we and the interesting part was it about it was we built sales our sales channel over WhatsApp. So we were one of the first companies which oh. sold over WhatsApp. And people loved it because they had that personal connection. Yeah. But they could do it from anywhere in the world. Yeah. And yes, so that really worked well for us. And Wow, it is now that I think of it, it is an entirely tech thing because it's e commerce and you're dominating the, the multiple channels mm -hmm. to get to the consumer and you're always uh, on top of the, the analytics, the metrics, what's happening. Wow, so this is up. So, so the tech background definitely worked very well. Definitely, I think it was only the tech yeah. that helped us become successful. Rest, wow. we, were, we are engineers, we know how to engineer the best socks. So when yeah. you know, we started this, I ordered 500 socks from across the world, from the best of the brands. I tried them, and I saw what is, what is good, what is not good. What yeah. can I make better? So I used to sit in sock factories for 48 hours straight. There, there were days when I was there for like two, three days, and I used to learn the art of sock making so that we could make the best socks out there. Oh. So now our socks, you can wear it for 18 hours straight. You know, you'll still, they won't leave a mark. You won't feel any itchiness. The cotton we use is Scottish Lisley cotton, which is the most premium cotton one can wow. have. So I think all this was engineering. Yeah. The product side, and then how do you sell it? How do you attract customer? How do you build that brand? Yeah. That's what I enjoy doing. Wow, that's so fascinating. Uh, sorry to make a joke on this one, because um, Go ahead. I, I remember Seinfeld show. I don't know whether you have seen Seinfeld. But, uh, there was an episode where Elaine's boss, he was very particular about <laughs> socks. And Elaine spent, you know, the Julia Louis Dreyfus, she plays the Elaine character. She spends the whole day trying on different socks <laughs> on him. He was a very old guy the whole day. And then I think Elaine quits or <laughs> was like, okay, I'm done. I can't do it anymore. <laughs> I, for that, I can recommend Socks Soho. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it makes perfect sense because CEOs in the office all the time, right? And, and, and you, you, the celebrities, they're filming things. They're, mm -hmm. they're always in the, in the action. They got to wear something that, you know, that's not going to leave marks and things like that. That's comfortable yeah. as well as attracts attention. Yeah, wow. And in, in America, you know, that, that's like a style statement. It is. Right? That's yeah. like a big thing, especially in Wall Street. Hmm. Right? That, that, that's uh, probably in Silicon Valley, maybe more hoodie style things. Yes. <laughs> but, but, you know, that, that, that's, a, that's a very... So with the Sock Soho, super successful. And now you're in uh, Better Not AI. By the way, where do you get the name Better uh, Butter Not but AI? Butter Not AI. AI. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a story behind it. Okay. Yeah. So uh, when we started this uh, business, you know, I was looking at different options, like what can we name this company? Yeah. So I had this one vision in my head. Whatever name I come up with, it should look great when it goes on a billboard. Oh. So I thought, okay, okay. So I started looking for different options, and you know, out of all the available options, I think butternut is going to look amazing yeah. on the 101 highway. <laughs> what do you oh, think? Oh wow! Yes, yes. Now that I th I'm visualizing your, your thought, now it makes so much sense because let's say I'm driving, I see it, butternut AI. Forget the AI, just butternut. I'm not going to forget it. The recall value is high, right? And people know butternut squash. Everybody, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> because uh, if I see like some fancy whatever name, like oh this tech, that tech, I'm like yeah, yeah, that's fine. I, I go, but then butternut, I'm like, 
huh, I, I, I saw that, right? Yeah, wow, so that's a way, folks, you guys can come up with names thinking about that. Wow, that's, exactly. that, that's a very, very innovative process. Now, that brings up this, this whole thing about your, your journey and, and you know, how you, you, how you grew up and, you know, how you got this painting and entrepreneurship, creating apps, this, this bug in you mm -hmm. that, you know, the always founder. Uh, you know, tell us a little bit more about that. Yes, the bug has been there since very long. Yeah. Even in college, I remember it was always like, okay, the studies are going on, but what extra can I do? Yeah. So I, I used to get my friends together. And so I started my first company. It was a small startup. It was Book My Present with my friend. Oh. And what we used to do was we used to uh, make customized gifts uh, for special occasions. And every Saturday, Sunday, like on special occasions, we would go and deliver those you know, things ourselves. Oh. So it was a very small thing that we did uh, in college. Yeah. yeah, so I think the bug was always there. And it was just the belief that, you know, yeah. yes, it, I have, I can do it because I really enjoy doing it. Yeah. It's not work for me. When I talk about building brands, about tech, about building products or talking to customers, I think I've always enjoyed it. Yeah. So it was never work for me. Yeah. So I think it was a very natural transition from doing my master's, getting into a job, and then I just knew, you know, even though the job was very cushy and everything was great, but in my heart I knew I am yeah. meant to be a builder and uh, I should go ahead with it. Yeah. So, yeah, the journey has been great. I've worked with multiple startups. I've worked with big companies like yeah. uh, TripAdvisor, Bank of America, and, uh, and this is my third startup, so. Wow. <laughs> so so the, the SOC idea came when you were in in the uh, trip, U.S., uh, trips, uh, trip advisor. Trip advisor. So but I'm assuming, you know, the, the the trip advisor folks. You're seeing so many people traveling. One thing I always forget. I don't know other people. Socks. And then I go there. I'm like, oh, now I gotta buy it. And if it, 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 it things are closed, you know, I gotta go in the morning and buy it. I have done it multiple times. Mm -hmm. The socks I always forget. Yes, that's why we are always also at airports in India. So, <laughs> we know, we know there are so many people like you who forget to buy those fresh socks yeah. or carry those fresh socks. So we are available at all the leading airports in India. Because a lot of times before traveling, you sometimes want to do the laundry and you're like, okay, let's get that done mm -hmm. because that's a more productive way of setting things up. Mm -hmm. And then you always forget what you put on the laundry and you already left. And, and like, okay, now I got to buy socks. So now you, your sock is available at the airport. Oh my God. There's nothing you haven't thought through. <laughs> this is, that's like entrepreneurship 101. Now, now, the other thing is you're very vocal yes. in the entrepreneurial world. Right. You, were, you, know, you were one of the ambassadors for TED. Hmm. Uh, so the TED Talks, and you're always giving TED Talks. And one of your TED Talks, close to, uh, but not close, uh, 630,000 or something like that, 650,000 views. So it'll be like a million view in probably a couple months. But uh, I'm like, and, and that one was very inspiring. I watched it. You talked about the, the, the Bo and Yo Singh. Yeah. I think everybody lo lo loved that and, and uh, how he was going towards the fire. Now, this is a very important thing. Mm -hmm. I think that might have helped you with, uh, with coming up with the AI. A lot of people are afraid of AI. Yes. They are running away where you are jumping right in. Right. So, you know, tell us a little bit about that. So I'm the Yo-Sing, right? <laughs> <laughs> You're the Yo-Sing, yes. <laughs> yes. So, see, whenever it, it has been historical. Yeah. Whenever something new comes, whenever technology you know, takes over or something uh, new happens in tech, people are always scared. Because as humans, yeah. we always want to be comfortable. We fear change. Yeah. Yeah. So even when computers came, you know, uh, there were like uh, 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 countries that were like, oh, we should not let computers in. You know, it would take oh, over yeah. our jobs. Yeah. In India, there were protests yeah. that we should not let this computer revolution, you know, come over and take over our jobs. But damn, look at what tech has done. Yeah. It's always like that. We are always yeah. fearful of the change. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I think we should just change the mindset that when tech is coming, change is going to come, but for the better. Yeah. Imagine, you know, when like when blue collar jobs, or when tech came in, blue collar jobs, uh, the people were very yeah. scared. Yeah. But now, see, there, were, there are so many tools out in the market that those jobs became better, easier, and more flexible. Yeah. Now, the... Uh, I would say the issue with AI is that now it is going after the white collar jobs. Yes. And yes. that's where people are like, hey, what are we going to do? Yeah. So I would say don't be scared. Okay. 
Yeah. Learn. Be creative. Yeah. Think. How can you be a creator in this new world? Yeah. And I would say two years down the line, things are going to be easier. Like if you want to build a website, yeah. you know, you button at it. Yeah. If you want to uh, do copywriting, you go to Jasper. Yeah. If you want to build uh, a PPT, you use Tome. Yeah. Have you ever thought like you were wasting your time doing all these things? Oh. Now you think of it, it was a waste of time because yeah, software can do it and much better than you did. Yeah. So now you can spend your time thinking about creative stuff, building creative stuff, hosting more podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So I would say don't be scared of new technology in your life. Always yeah. embrace it. Always try it and always see how can you use it in your business, in your personal life and to make it better. Yeah. So I, I am very optimistic about the AI revolution that we are seeing right now. And I feel I would encourage everybody to use it. To, if you have not used ChatGPT, go and use it. If yeah. you have not used Butternut AI, go try it. If you have, whenever you come up with something new, try yeah. it. Yeah. It is going to make your life easier. Wow. So, yeah, that makes perfect sense because, you know, we're like, oh, what are we going to do? But the, the thing is, we can come up with prompts, be more creative. We, can, we have the free time to think more. Yeah. Like a lot of the things, a lot of entrepreneurs not thinking that, oh, people are going to miss the sock, so let's put it in the airport. Uh -huh. So it frees up your time to think about that instead of, oh, I got to make the website or I have to debug the code that I wrote. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's something, it's, it, it, it's, it's, it's missing the, the, uh, the, the, the uh, cross-device compatibility. You know, they, they had those back in the days when I was, oh, it, it works on the web, but I, I was trying on my Android phone. I didn't, I don't have an Android phone, man. This is <laughs> sucks. There's like a 50,000 Android phones. How am I going to check on? Now it's all you. You just give a prompt. And so I think this is a space where creatives hmm. are going to thrive. Yes. And you are one of the creatives. Whenever I think of the entrepreneurship style of mm -hmm. yours, you are always thinking out of the box. And, uh, you know, your art uh, definitely comes in handy there. And, and the, the creative stuff, which, what do you think about this education? Should we be including more mm -hmm. of the creativity generating things? Yes, yes, because the future of jobs is going to be very different. Yeah. Five years down the line, we would require many uh, less developers than we have now. Yeah. We would require many less like copywriters than we have now. Yeah. So the nature of jobs, they're going to change now. We need a lot of coders and we have a few PMs, but in the future, we'll, we'll have a lot of new jobs that are going to be similar to being a PM yeah. and a fewer jobs of being a coder because oh. AI can do the coding, but you need to think, you need to be creative of telling that machine what to build, how to build, what exactly yeah. you want. So yes, you are, I would say your time, you know, everybody watching, your time is going to free up a lot yeah. and you'll be able to, like today, you can start a business with even $1,000 in your bank. Yeah. Right? Because you have all the tools to build your business and to take it to, out to the world. You don't need a lot of money to do that. Yeah. Things have become easier. So in future, more and more people will be starting their own business because yeah. now it has become easier, whether it is tech business, e-commerce business, or anything. Yeah. Now you have the sufficient tools uh, to help you out. And that's the future. So embrace it. Embrace the creativity. In schools, yes. Because we go to school to learn new things, to get yeah, jobs. Yeah. So schools need to embrace the creativity to you know, bring more creative stuff in their curriculum. Yeah. And I'm sure people are going to enjoy that as well. Yeah, this is this is very exciting, and the way you present it makes it more exciting. And, the, <laughs> and you know, you you should be the role model for the the AI ambassador. <laughs> the, 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 you're the AI ambassador, so people are like, yeah, I I, I kind of connect because that's that's the thing. You, you make it so connecting, you know, relatable to people, the audience, and 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 that brings up the the. We talked a little bit about your you know background, you know, uh, learning computer science while starting, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, 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 your own startup while in college, things like that, and then you know working for the U.S. big companies, and then going back there, and the sock company, and then coming back again to do the AI revolution. Yes. Wow. So, so, uh, uh, it, it, so one of the thing I I, I I I think of. You enjoy yeah. what you are doing. It's not a work or an additional mm. uh, task for you. Mm. So th th that's, that's, is, that, is that a fundamental thing for an entrepreneur? Yes, definitely. I would say if you don't enjoy what you are doing, just stop doing that. 
because entre- <laughs> yes, yes, because <laughs> entrepreneurship is not like this. It's it's not you're not going to grow from you know zero to hundred like this. Yeah, you know how it is. It's zigzag, and there are going to be good days. There are going to be yeah. many bad days as well. If you don't believe in yourself and what you're doing, you're going to give up very easily. Yeah. So you need to find something when you're building a business. You need to find something that you enjoy. But that doesn't mean, hey, I love to sing, so I am going to become a singer. Yeah. It should be like, do I think, you know, I can build something, especially uh, entrepreneurship. Yeah. It, it is not something I am passionate about. It is something about solving a problem. Can you find a problem you can solve? And yeah. that problem is faced by many people out there. And you enjoy doing that as well. Yeah. When these three, three things combine, that's, I, I would say, the secret sauce of being a successful entrepreneur. Yeah. You know, this is, uh, so you need to write a book on entrepreneurship. That's going to be your next thing. <laughs> this is uh, because you are all at talks. You are pretty much everywhere. You are even on World Economic Forum. Yes, I was, a, I was selected as a global shaper by World Economic Forum. Oh, wow. What is, how, what is that? Like, how are you helping them? So Global Shaper is a community of under 30 people who are making a change in their community, uh, and uh, yes, I was doing a lot of different things in the community wow. using tech or otherwise. And that's how I got selected as a global shaper by World Economic Forum. I was also selected uh, to represent India at Summer Davos in China by World wow. Economic Forum. So uh, it's an interesting community of yeah. builders, creators, or people changing the world and making an impact. So, yeah. Uh, you know, this is, I, I'm going to say this, a, a lot of people I see they go out there, World Economic Forum, TED Talk, this, that. They just preach. <laughs> or they, they, they are preaching or teaching. They don't do it themselves later because they're too big to do it. Whereas you came back. I'm like, I'm not too big. I'm going to start it again mm-hmm. in the AI revolution. So people can see and they can connect with you so easily. They're like, oh, my God, if she can go back and start another AI, I can go back and maybe start another company. Exactly. Wow. So this this mm-hmm. is this is you know they gotta they gotta bring you back to talk about the butternut AI <laughs> to because you know uh, but th- th- that that's very important because of the climate change and a lot of things I see a lot of people they're just giving speeches and speeches and that became the job mm-hmm. itself. I'm like that's great, but mm-hmm. I would love you to go create something to solve that problem mm-hmm. and then come back and again preach and teach. That would I would love that. Right, and you're doing exactly that. I think from my heart, I'm a builder. Like, yeah. even if I don't talk at a podcast or something, that, that doesn't make any difference in my life. Yeah. What makes a difference is my, in my life is building something because I enjoy oh. it. And when it comes to, you know, uh, talking about what I build, I, I just yeah. enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I enjoy what I built and I want people to know. So whenever I think of a business, it's always like, hey, what is the next thing I can build that could get into millions of homes? Yeah. So that's my mindset. And for me, building is much uh, more enjoyable than, you know, talking. Yeah. yeah. So I, I, this is one thing I, I always thought of. How do you, so I'm sure you're coming up with a lot of ideas all the time. That's probably instant in your mind. Mm -hmm. How do you process it? Like you actually told us like how you thought through the sock, you Uh know, different, uh, the industry. So how do you process, let's say you got a new idea uh, and and then how do you filter it through and how do you process that? I'm a very practical person. Uh It's not, hey, I think, you know, this is what uh, will work for me. I'm very practical. It's not what I want. When I'm building a business, I want people to love it. I need to build it for the customers. I'm not building it for myself. Yeah. I'm just the, you know, the channel who's building it, but I'm building it for the world. So how do you get practical when you are building a business? First of all, you need to see what you're building is even required in the market. Because any business that is built out there, whether it is a sock business or butternut AI or anything, it's like, is it solving a problem? Is it making anyone's life better or easier? You have to think on that. And how do you come up with that solution? A lot of people I have seen, they get stuck in the cycle of building the best product out there. Yeah. And they spend two years or three years building the best product and they never launch because they're too scared to launch. Yeah. And they, they want to make the best product the world has seen. And when they launch, nobody uses it. Yeah. So what I do is I do it in a different manner. I have an idea. It's a hypothesis in my mind yeah. that could work or that could not work. I've done many things that didn't work as yeah, well. Yeah. So it was my hypothesis, but how can I reduce the time I waste 
uh, on anything. Yeah. It's by going out in the market, building something, going out in the market and finding if there are real customers for this or not. So wow. that's how I approach anything. Is it practical yeah. you know, for me to do it? Is it practical for others to even use it? What is the price point? What, is, you know, the fee what are the features that I'm yeah. building? And then once you launch it, launch it, go and talk to the people you are building for. Yeah. They are going to tell you if you are going in the right direction or not. And never hesitate to iterate. Yeah. Because always remember, you're building for the customers. They will tell you what is right, what is wrong. Yeah. So, if, so if you come and tell me, hey, you know, this is not right, I want it this way. Then, since I'm talking to so many different other customers as yeah. well, and that thought is resonated, I know, okay, this is something I need to change. Yeah. So I'm not changing something depending on, you know, one person's feedback. Yeah. I'm talking to a lot of customers every day, no matter what kind of business I am in. I'm understanding what is something I can make better. And that's how you iterate. Yeah. So never hesitate to launch your business. Build an MVP. Don't, don't think about building that billion dollar business out there. Yeah. It, will go, it will get there if you build the right product. But launch an MVP and then talk to your customers yeah. and iterate. This is the wow. cycle I follow yeah. whenever I'm building something. I, I think that's probably going to be the most important thing people, mm -hmm. m m people have learned from, t from today because I, I learned a lot from this. I have seen so many startups stealth mode forever. Forever. By the time they come out, that thing doesn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> that market just gone. It, it, it doesn't exist. Mm. Or they do something, uh, they're thinking, oh, if somebody else knows, they're going to copy. But uh, I, I had a guy, uh, the, a friend of mine, Sam Kamani, was on my show uh, from Australia. Mm -hmm. He's like, either way, they're going to copy, copy you. Copy, right? even before you launch or after you launch. <laughs> right. If you're successful, people are going to copy. Right, yeah. <laughs> so, and if you're successful, then they're going to copy so many times. So, you know, so that makes perfect sense not to be afraid. Just go mm -hmm. jump in. Mm -hmm. Now, now that, that brings up this thing that the fear of rejection, whether it, that goes in different places in life, but in the startup world, the fear of failure or, you know, maybe you might say, uh, but sometimes people are like, no, no, I, I'm not, I, I don't worry about it, I go for it, you know. But after a couple of failures, they're like, oh, maybe I, I gotta rethink, you know, <laughs> they, they're, they're changing their thoughts. So, you know, you have gone through similar things, mm -hmm. otherwise there is no way you can be have, oh, I just did one thing, I'm perfectly oh. successful, <laughs> right? So, so how, how do you, uh, you know, process that as well? Like uh, when, when that happens, mm -hmm. what do you think and what do you say to yourself? When, okay, when rejection comes, what I say to myself is, I believe that things are going to work out for me. Yeah. So maybe it's not, it's not an immediate uh, thing. If I want something today, it's not going to happen today. Yeah. But if I put my effort, my 100% effort into it, it will happen. I think that belief is what keeps me motivated inspired and even in my uh, you know during the low days yeah it keeps me going and i just and you know once you are in the cycle of building businesses you have seen you know many lows now if something comes up it's like i know this this was bound to happen and now yeah. i'll just you know it's okay it's going to happen but for people who are doing it for the first time i would just say you know have belief in yourself you yeah. will figure it out you just need to move ahead even if you're moving like 1% or 10% just move ahead yeah. And you will figure it out. Oh, yeah, no, that, that makes so much sense. Now, the other thing is, for people like you, who are already successful in one startup, mm -hmm. like, you know, you have the Sock Soho, which is super popular. You walk through the airport, your Sock Soho is there. You talk to a CEO, you talk to a venture capitalist, the guy's probably wearing a Sock Soho. <laughs> so in that case, sometimes it's, you know, the processing becomes like, oh, the next thing, whatever I'm going to think of is going to be perfect. Hmm. So how do you uh, kind of keep the balance, like, you know, keep, keep the checks, like, hey, be careful, you know, be ready, things like that. I think once, uh, as I mentioned, for me, you know, getting rejections uh, at different places, it's not new. And once you have started a business, it becomes a part of your life. Yeah. You know, you know, okay, this is, this is the process. Yeah. Many good things and many bad things will come your way. You just learn to accept it. So you don't have to be, oh, if I made one successful business, the other one is also going to be successful yeah. from day one. Yeah. You don't have that belief that it is going to be successful if you are solving the right problem. But it could happen on day five or day 10. Yeah. Just be optimistic. I think builders are very optimist about the future. That's why they are builders. Yeah. <laughs> and, and if any optimist I can think of, you are you're super optimist. You're, I am. Uh, another 
uh, fear of rejection or another anxiety entrepreneurs have while raising money. Mm -hmm. And you have successfully raised funds for Sock Soho from a lot of the US investors while the company is based in, uh, in, mm -hmm. in, in India. So like, how did you kind of uh, go through that process? See, when you are raising venture capital, you should always be in a position where you have the power. Yeah. So when, when we raised funding for Sock Soho, it wasn't the first day that we started the business. We were oh. already in business. We were yeah. profitable. We were making money. And what we were doing, you know, when you believe in what you do and yeah. the results are, can be seen, that's when you have the leverage. Yes. And that's when VCs want to come in and yeah. join the ship. So... Uh, I would say, yeah, when you're building something, yeah. build, build something that is useful yeah. and VCs would jump onto it. Ah, because your, your formula for success, it should be by default. This is, don't wait, create something, create. go for it, oh. talk to the customer. And if you are getting traction, if things are working out, VCs will come naturally. Exactly. You don't have to be afraid like, oh, are they going to give me money? Oh, it doesn't matter. Think of your customers first. If you can delight them, yeah. money will come. Ah. VCs are going to come if they know, you know your uh, product is working. Yeah. Your customers, they already love you. They are going to pay for your product. Yeah. So I would say first think about your customers. VCs, yes, you know, yeah. will happen eventually. Wow, you know, that, that, that makes sense because uh, you know, a lot of that uh, fear that people have, when should I go, wait. You know, launch something. Uh, once you launch something, talk to the customer. Then, you know, things will happen naturally. Mm. I think you are the believer of organic growth, uh, or, or that could be, uh, yeah, that could be. Different. I would say yeah. solving something. Yeah, yeah, build, yeah, yeah, make something people want, as Paul yeah. Graham says. Yeah. You know, when you build that, growth comes. Yeah. Because people talk about it. People discuss about it. People put it online. People, you know, talk to their fellow like. Uh, for butternut, I have yeah. seen, like, when I ask my customers, how did you discover us? They're like, oh, I found you on this uh, one blog I saw on Medium, or my friend who is a fellow business owner told me about you. So if you're solving something that is making lives of people easier, they will always talk about it. Yeah. So it's a wow. chain. Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it's this. Now, now, in terms of, uh, <clears throat> there is a, you know, in U.S., Especially in the Silicon Valley, people are a little more open-minded. Mm. You're starting a company, they're, they're, they, they were, okay, okay, go ahead, mm -hmm. you know, try it out. But places, in some places in India, not all the places are that advanced thinker that, oh, okay, go fail. And, you know, for them sometimes fail means, oh, my God, that's something bad happened, uh -huh. you know. So, uh, but for us, we, 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 like, failure is everyday thing. Every day I'm failing yeah. so many times, I lost count now. <laughs> you know, kind of, for you, it's, it's like, so many iteration of things going on. Mm -hmm. So I, how do you tell somebody young that's, that's, you know, that's inspired by you that, hey, uh, uh, failure is okay and it should be accepted in the society, hmm. right? So failure, you should not look at failure as the end of the world. Yeah. Or, you know, that's it, my life is gonna end if I fail here. It's just a learning. Yeah. So you should learn something from your failure and not repeat it. For somebody young, I think they should embrace failures. And college is the best time to try out new things and fail at it or be successful at it, yeah. but not be scared of not trying out. Like for me, my formula is, you know, 20 years down the line, will I regret not doing it? Will I regret not starting a company? Will I regret not taking that action? I, you know, that train of thought really takes the fear out of me. Yeah. Like that regret is going to be bigger than the fear that I have ah. right now. So think long term. You could be fearful, but then you think, OK, if I do this action today, how will it A, to impact me in my longer run? And if it makes sense for you or if that is the place where you want to see yourself, yeah. go and take that action. And in young age, I don't know, but you don't need to be scared of yeah. things. You, yeah. yeah, you should go out and try as, as many things as you want because you never know where you find something that clicks with you. And yeah. you want to, you know, stick with it. Yeah. So, yeah, for me, I think college is the best time to try out. Yeah. And don't be scared. Don't be fearful. You can always go and get a job because yeah. you might be good at something at least. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, this, that, 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 that's just so amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, this, uh, one other thing I'm going to ask you is uh, uh, the, the, the fear of regret. 
uh, is bigger than you know fear of failure today. Because later on, you're gonna look at the you know what you just mentioned, and this is this is my favorite thing actually. Uh, the Jeff Bezos, I'm sure mm -hmm. you're in the e-commerce, e you're uh, very familiar with his stuff. Talks about that all the time. That regret minimization model or something he talks about, mm -hmm. where he would project himself when he's 80, mm -hmm. and he'd say. Would I regret yeah. failing it here? You know, no. No. So, and, and uh, this is that. That's just. I, I think is that the e-commerce people? They always have... <laughs> <laughs> similar chain of thought. <laughs> yeah, this is, I, I, I think if I go into e-commerce, then I'll be like, yeah, I, I think the same way. This is. <laughs> so that means you are like destined for an. E you are already successful in e-commerce. By the way, are you going to be taking on other items uh -huh. similar to your socks? I think socks in itself is a huge market. Yeah. So yeah. we are going to win that. Stick to the... Stick to uh, it, yeah. yes. So no. this is one thing about you that you are not trying to do it all. You're very specific and strategic about your attack. When you try to build everything for everyone, that's the perfect formula to fail. <laughs> yes. Because you don't know where your customers are or who are you serving. Yeah. So for me, when I'm looking at businesses or you know, startups, it's always like, who are the first 100 customers? Yeah. What's that target group I can solve for? Oh. So yeah, that's, that's you know, with Butternut, who are the people I'm building for? Yeah. These are people who are small business owners or freelancers. Yeah. They need websites and they don't have the resources to hire somebody for $10,000. Yeah. They want the control on their business and they don't want to spend so much of time uh, you know, learning to code or anything. Yeah. So, and, it's, and it's just so much easier. The drag and drop is okay, but it still has so much of things that you got to drag and drop and it's learn. It's a shitty experience, I would say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I have never enjoyed building websites on yeah. Wix or Webflow because drag and drop is not meant for browsers. Because even Webflow, you definitely need to have basic programming background. True. There's no way you're going to, oh, I don't know anything. Let me go into Webflow. You're, you cannot do anything. You there. cannot do anything. And that what stops people from mm -hmm. launching their business online. Yeah. And that's what I'm solving. And, and, and a lot of people, you know, this is, uh, this is no criticism for WordPress or anything. It, it, it's a wonderful platform, but uh, they, they think, okay, it's free, it's, free, uh, it, it's uh, open source, so many plugins are there, I'm going to do it. And then they look at uh, post your first blog type thing or my first, they're like, what in the world is this? Uh -huh. Where am I going to, What? where do I go? And they watch some YouTube, they figure out, by the time they get to half the page, they're like, oh, okay, that's, that's enough. So when you're wasting your time thinking about learning these tools, mm -hmm. you could be really thinking, where should I put my socks? Should it be at the airport? <laughs> or what material should I be using? Like, you need to be the best at in your field, not try to learn everything and fail at all. Right? Yeah, so I think this one thing uh, has, uh, you know, re been reinforced into my brain yeah. by my parents and my grandfather that, Whatever you do, small or big, be the best at it. So it doesn't matter what you do. If yeah. you are painting, be the best painter in your family. If you're starting a business, you know, if you're starting a sock business, be the best at it. If you're, you know, building this business or building websites, be the best out of there. When people try you, they should be like, aha. Uh -huh. I think yeah. that just, okay, let me not aim for like everything. Let me aim for one thing and be the best uh, in that is what really yeah. has shaped me. This is your parents. Uh, they, they 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 need to write a book on uh, raising children. This <laughs> I was a difficult kid. <laughs> <laughs> Are you the only child? Or? No, I have two siblings. Two siblings, two. brothers or sisters? I have a younger brother and an elder sister. Ah, okay. So yeah, so you're you're in the middle. I'm the middle one. Yes. Wow. Okay. <laughs> and yeah, Are all of you entrepreneurial or just you? Oh no, my do uh, my um, brother. He's uh, he's a doctor. Oh. So I, my father is a businessman. My grandfather was, uh, had his own business. So I think ah, I got the genes from, from there. The, ah, yes. okay, okay. That, wow, okay. So, so you, the businessman, the doctor, because doctors, they have a very different thought process. Yes. My, my, I have a lot of friends that are doctors. They think very differently. I think years of training change their uh, the outlook of things. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And especially in, 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 uh, in medicine, you cannot experiment too much on patients. Yes. So you're, you're kind of trained to think differently. I think doctors are very responsible people. Yeah. yeah. They're like, oh, if I do something wrong, that could cost somebody yeah. a lot. 
But with entrepreneurs and with coders, it's like, oh, we can try out stuff. Yeah, we can try out <laughs> we stuff. We can be crazy. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that, that, that makes perfect sense. Wow. So, you know, this, this is all fascinating. Now, uh, what's your next with the Butternut AI? What, what are you trying to, you know, what's the, the let's say, mm -hmm. a, uh, six, six months to a year plan or five year plan? I'm sure you have uh, one other thing you mentioned, long term plan is to solve the complexities of, you know, e-commerce and uh, software, really. the, the, the software, especially the back end codes, mm. how to bring that through AI. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would uh, that would be disastrous for the software industry, <laughs> the, the coders. But, you know, for now they're like oh, front end. Okay, we can manage that. <laughs> Whoa! I'm like Jesus. <laughs> so yeah, the long term plan is, I would say that you know, tools like Shopify, Wix, Webflow, yeah. they were great for the pre AI era. Yeah, you know, but the post AI era is going to look very different, and that's where we are building. So. Butternut, right now we are perfecting the website building space. And oh. it is like, hey, today you can come and build a website, then you have editing features and everything. But now what we are building is we are building the entire app store, just you have an app, just as you have an Apple. Oh. Because every business has a different requirement. Yeah. Yeah. And what sort of integrations do you need is very much dependent on the kind of business you run. You yeah. might require a payment solutions or you might require a scheduling software yeah. to be integrated. So we are building that entire app store. Okay. where people can come uh, and you know pick the kind of integrations they need for their business. So we are building the entire ecosystem of uh, launching your business online, starting from website and then doing these integrations and yeah. you know doing online marketing. So that's the plan for next couple of months and okay. eventually we want to get into we'll be getting into e-commerce. Okay. okay. Yeah. So that's the plan and once we win the website space, we will get into the app space. Oh. Yes. Oh, the, if for, for even you're going to make it uh, like prompt based, you can create your own app. Yeah, just imagine having a developer by your side 24 7, but that yeah. doesn't, you know, that developer doesn't have any emotions and that works for you all the time. Wow. Our AI engines are going to work for you all the time. As long as you know what you are building, yeah. you give it as a prompt and the model is going to build it. The AI model is going to build it for you. Wow. If you need any change, yeah. you talk to our model just like yeah. you talk to a developer. And that's how oh. the evolution of the software industry is going to be. Yeah. So we will have many more PMs in future than coders because AI, wow. you know, we can do it for you. Wow, that, that's just so fascinating because so you are basically a developer friend so that's available 24-7 for you, your business, for anything you want to do mm -hmm. online to launch your business, to the marketing, the integration of existing things. So, because a lot of times, even your customers could be not just new businesses, but people that are frustrated with maintaining websites and all that stuff. I have so many, actually, uh, I would say 70% of the people who are yeah. building on Butternut are existing uh, business owners who own a website, but they got it uh, built from some dev shop or from some freelancer. And yeah. now they don't know if they want to edit something. They don't know what they, yeah. they should do. So they have no control over it. Oh. So that's the problem solved with Butternut. Yeah. Like you come, you build, you edit, whatever you want to do, you can just do it. Wow. Without requiring any code or drag and drop. You can understand. We all understand English. So yeah. yeah. But on Butternut, you can build in 110 different languages. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. Wow, yeah. okay. So the, the AI, so are you, so I, I basically answered that a lot. Uh, through. You are extremely optimistic about the potential good things of AI. Yeah. And uh, you want people to embrace that future, hmm. not shy away from it. Yeah, I want everybody to become a creator. Yeah. And not just a user of that technology. Think how can you make an impact yeah. in that space? It could be how can you use that AI component in your space to make an impact? Yeah. You know, and, and actually it makes you are actually the right now I can come up with an idea, any idea, and I want to visualize it through a website. I just go put the prompt done. I want some changes. I have the conversation with the AI and uh, with Butternut AI and wow. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then I'm driving uh, <laughs> and I, I see your billboard <laughs> and uh, I'm like, okay, yeah, that, that's also, wow, this is, this is, this is so fascinating. And, and you are moving on uh, like with full speed. And so, so right now is Butternut your 100%? My 100%, 110%. I saw you uh, gave an answer, which is viral answer. Why give 60%? Why not 
Yes. Yes. <laughs> Nothing comes out of 60%. Yes. Yes. I, I wanted exactly. Yes. That, that, so be the best. Yes. Yeah. So when you do something, always aim for the best. Always aim to give your 100%. Like, if I don't feel like doing anything, to be honest, I don't really do it in my life. I, I find out a way to get away from it. Yeah. Yeah. So if I don't enjoy anything, I'm never going to start a business in it. I should yeah. love it. I should give my 110%. I think that thought of being the best yeah. is that what stays yeah, with me. Yeah, being the best. Yeah, that's the... E being the is, best version of yourself, like, you yeah. know? Yeah. Everything you say is so connected and so relatable. Now, I, I need you to, you know, tell these young folks that are watching, or they don't have to be young. They can be any age to use Butternut AI. <laughs> they don't, they yeah, can they be, can be 60. Yeah. They can be 7 years old. My nephew, who is 8... He, he could build a website. Wow. <laughs> you know, back in the days for developers, uh, uh, the target, uh, the easy target was older folks. Hmm. They were like, nah, I don't have time or I, I don't want to be learning this new tool or something like that. You know, just you go and do it. And they give you the idea, which is basically the prompt. Yeah. And the developer takes the prompt and, you know, but that, does the thing and then builds a big, uh, huge amount of money. And for you, you also have a free version. Yes. So you can go and... Go on butternut.ai, type in your business name and just a few keywords, and you can see the entire website. If you want to link your domain name with a website, that's where the subscription kicks in because okay. we'll be providing you with hosting, SSL, all those yeah. things, SEO optimizations, everything. And, but you can try it for free, and you can edit it, regenerate it. You can do it as much as you want for free. Wow. For as long as you want, but when you long. connect it with your domain, that, that means you're a real business and, you know, that then you only give the monthly subscription. Yeah. Okay. Wow. So, so now for the, for the entrepreneurs, you, you got to, uh, before you write your book, I know that will <laughs> be coming down the road, but for now, uh, uh, you know, what, what are some of your top advice? For young entrepreneurs, first of all, I would say never be scared of failure. Okay. And whenever you're starting to build anything, always think of your customers. Oh. So build something, build, just think, what can you build in one week and launch? Yeah. It can solve maybe just one problem. That's fine, as long as it solves a problem. Yeah. So build, give yourself a deadline, build something in one week or maybe two weeks, launch it, and then make people try it. it. Your audience could be sitting on Product Hunt, on Twitter, on LinkedIn, on Instagram, wherever you think your audience is going to be, go and launch it. And yeah. ask for feedback and take that feedback. The more you'll talk to your customers, the more you'll understand what you're doing is right or not. Yeah. And you'll find your next direction. So never be scared of launching. Launch as fast as you can. Talk to your customers and iterate. Yeah. You can be doing it as a side hustle. You can be doing it as full time. But this is, these are the principles I use whenever yeah. I go on to start something. Wow, that's, that's unbelievable advice. Now, other than st uh, razor focus on startups, how, how, uh, what else do you do to, you know, kind of mentally unfold, not to take all the butternut and the <laughs> socks so whole stress? Uh -huh. uh, w any other activities, hobbies that you're uh, painting maybe? Yeah, so... I enjoy reading. Oh, wow. I read a lot. And um, yes, I love to, I read a lot of biographies. I read oh. uh, a lot of, you know, business books. Uh, like the recent I'm reading is by Andrew, the founder of Intel, The Output Management. Oh, That's an wow. impactful book. Yeah. I read a lot. I, I hike. Oh, hiking. <laughs> now yeah. I live in Bay Area, so I need to yeah. hike, right? <laughs> I hike. I spend a lot of time with my friends okay. and talking to meeting new people, understanding yeah. your different perspectives. So that's all, and I enjoy doing my work, so I, yeah. it's not like I get to switch my mind off. It's always I'm thinking about the next thing, yeah. and I enjoy it. Yeah. yeah. Plus watching podcasts like this one. Oh, I, <laughs> that's like what I do all the time. <laughs> oh, this is, you know, so, so uh, I, I'm just thank you. This is, uh, th this has been a very, very good refreshment lesson in entrepreneurship, you know, and, and I, I, I loved it, everything you said, and it, it's going to be so helpful for folks. Now, for Butternut AI, we need to, we need to uh, see you back whenever you've launched something, uh, a new feature or the app store is fully active or, or something new coming mm -hmm. up. 
uh, you know, so we, we, we need to we need to have you back uh, to give us new things, new ideas, and we're so honored to have you. Uh, and and uh, you know, uh, so yeah, uh, folks. By the way, butternut.ai. You gotta check it out, and it, it's it's super simple spelling. Nobody can make a mistake with <laughs> butter and nut. You know, butternut.ai. Go put a prompt in, and you know, build a website. Try it out for free. It's all free, and you know. Uh, and, and connect with Pritika. Pritika yes. uh, she is very active on Product Hunt and, you know. Uh, yes, so if anybody wants to leave a feedback, connect yeah. with me, you can always, you know, connect with me on Twitter, on LinkedIn, yeah. or you can always write to me at Pritika at the rate butternut.ai. Oh, Pritika at uh, butternut.ai. By the way, uh, so you're you are very active on Twitter. I am. Are, are you also active on Threads? Soon. <laughs> it just came out yesterday. Soon. <laughs> yes, very soon. <laughs> yes, uh, it, it's supposed to be the Twitter killer or whatever, mm -hmm. uh, you know, from, from Mark Zuckerberg from the Instagram side. But so, so yeah, Twitter is uh, your, a lot of communication you're doing to Twitter. LinkedIn and Twitter, yes. Uh, LinkedIn also, okay, yes. okay. And uh, so, yeah, folks, go connect with her. And, you know, we need to have her back, you know, and, and thank you. Thank you, Pratika, for thank coming Thank you. In. I really enjoyed it. Thank oh. you. I'll be looking forward to the next round. Oh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely, folks. All right. Uh, please do subscribe.